let's start with the debut single, I'll Give You Hell. That was the first one out. So can you just uh, walk us through the creative process behind the track and maybe how it kind of sets the tone for the upcoming debut album? Well, I'll Give You Hell came onto the record, I think it was quite late because we felt like, hey, we don't have enough fast songs on this album, so we need one really up-tempo song. And me and Mika had made a demo earlier, you know, perhaps a year before that, which we just just speed wrote something for fun. It was super hectic and chaotic and sounded very different to what it sounds now. But we thought it was kind of fun, you know, so we went with it and, hey, let's make this song onto the record. And then we we produced it together and recorded it. And then, yeah, it became the album opener in that sense. Yeah, we needed that song. It was such a weird, chaotic song from the beginning, but we <laughs> we found it in the computer and we were like, yeah, let's make something out of this. And um, yeah, it was kind of a fun track to do, yeah, and open with a bit of a bam and a bit of speed. Yeah. The demo track, I think, was called Nefatafl, which is like a Viking chess game. And the <laughs> picture me and Mika had in hand was this Piri Viking it who plays the game, you know, so it was very hectic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a song now, a real song. <laughs> <laughs> well, the debut album comes out about in one month, so... Uh, is it like completely done now, or what stage is it in? The album has been done. done. For a few years. Yeah, it's been done since 2020, actually. Actually, yeah. we, we didn't release anything because of the pandemic, because we wouldn't have been able to go out and play. So that's why why we waited so long. But yeah, everything is done. I think yeah, all of our Nick are traveling this weekend down to to Southern Finland to do a yeah. music video. But, you know, besides from that, everything is is banging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're getting a bit tired, you know, in the evening. <laughs> so much work all day. But, yeah. Yeah, like, as Björn said, it was made a few years uh, ago already, and we wanted to, like... If we just put out music out there, it's just going to disappear. So we wanted to come out with a bit of a a bam again and have like this this tour announcement and also like announcing that we are on Napalm record, Napal Records now. So it felt like, yeah, now is the time and now we got everything. So now let's let's go. So what is kind of the origin story of Arctis? How long back does it go? Well, we formed Arctis in 2018. We had a band prior to that, and we had done some gigs around with that band. And when we were making the third album, it became so different from the start, so we felt like, hey, let's make a new band, because this is so different to what we usually do. And it felt really interesting and inspiring, so we went down the rabbit hole, and then we got Arctis out of that. Yeah. I mean, we go way back. Um, Björn and Mika is like an old married couple already and been playing music for forever together as teenagers. Yeah, and, 20 years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't start with all telling all the years because Björn is like having all the years. This year I did that and this year I met Alva. And I'm like, no, I don't remember. But we all met in, in, in school also and eventually we became a band with the old band. And then Arctis is our fresh start again, something new. It's all new to us as well. So, yeah, it's exciting. What can you tell me about the process of making this album, the writing and the recording? Co-wrote a lot of the songs with uh, Jimmy Westerlund, who has done these uh, bands such as Stormo Drang and uh, uh, John Aaron and these different Direction. artists. One, yeah, one, 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 de one Desire. One Desire. <laughs> Oh my uh, god. One <laughs> yeah, but we he was the producer of the album and we wrote the songs together with him in the studio and there were really long 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 nights, you know, for this mm. album. We had 
sessions that could last 18 hours on end you know it could be really it was really grueling and a big grind and a yeah you know, not a lot not not a much, lot of sleep you know during these weeks when we were doing this but came through really nice and the one really good thing is that earlier in the old band it was me making the demos or and the songs and finalizing the songs now it was suddenly different because i wouldn't have been able to do it myself so everybody you know joined in on the process and started writing and that's something i'm really happy about with arctis is that everyone is a part of the songwriting team and all songs you hear that you know everyone's been part of it so it's actually like you can imagine like you do when you're younger that everyone's has made their their part in the song and we do that so that's nice yeah, it's like since a few years back, we all make something on one song. We even sit together in the last phase to like finalize it together. And yeah, really like the whole gr group is making each song together. So it's it's pretty cool. It's a bit special. How has it been to kind of sit on the material for such a long time? Mm. Fucking nightmare, to be honest. Oh, you know? <laughs> You know, it's not nice to have songs, you know, and you're having great stuff in, in the bank to say, you know, and not being sure when it's going to come out, you know. It's different if you have, like, established yourself and you're sitting on something, you know, and well, let's wait for the right time. But, you know, it's nerve-wracking because uh, there are no guarantees in the world that you're going to actually get it out because it's up to different people, you know, if they want to sign you, etc. you know. So it... It wasn't fun, you know, to, you know, live on hopes and dreams, you know, and just thinking that we're going to pull through. But I'm very happy that we were patient to do it because it paid off in the end. Yeah. And like we progressed so much after this album even. So we're kind of just eager to show more stuff and that to have to wait with the old stuff, which is also like of course super exciting to us the this album as well because it's like it's been a few years and now it's starting to live again like it's uh we're getting excited about it again so to say but still to have new demos and like and be eager to like get to album two it's it's yeah it's not been nice to just sit and wait because there's so much to get out of here like there's so much to give musically so yeah but we're here now and now we're just moving with a fast pace so we can get everything that we want to get out <laughs> yeah and we started yeah. writing songs for the second album during the pandemic as well making the first demos so that was a bit you know special and hard when you haven't even played your first songs live yeah. or done anything so it's um yeah it was it was a bit special but i'm happy with that we did that too because we're currently working on the second album as well and yeah, uh, yeah it's like a horse that's just gone into a stampede and we're stuck in the in the saddle you know and we're still you know have to just stay on it now as long as it runs <laughs> as i understand amazingly your first gig will be with apocalyptica in luxembourg in the uh 11th next month so th well that's really something like what are your thoughts and feelings on the occasion yeah we like to go out go start with a big bang so we're gonna jump in on the far end of the pool you know and see if we can swim you know yeah <laughs> it's, it's, <Fine> <laughs> it's like yeah it's just crazy but that's how we that's how we do stuff <laughs> that's how we go forward it just has to be like this huge step all in. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. of course, such an honor to go with Apocalyptica. That's also like mind blowing and really cool to go with fellow Finns and such a legendary band. I mean, yeah, it's like no small pops. It's just straight to the big, big places with a big band. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really nice because when I started to listen to metal, Apocalyptica was an emerging band. So it's really nice to be part of this because, yeah, for me, it's 
we have bands him knife wish and apocalyptica and of course the rasmus and or all those those other bands but apocalyptica is one of the definite you know finnish legacy bands if you will mm. yeah we go back to the music uh how would you describe in your own words the modern metal that we will hear on the debut album there's a really short and nice description it's like a metal band with a pop crown that's how i would describe our this because you have that heavy drums the heavy bass heavy heavy guitars but then you have edm synths and all of us vocals on top which is like the sparkle sparkle little fairy dust on top you know so that's how i would describe it yeah and uh, definitely this first album is is a bit a mix of everything it's a lot of rock and maybe not the most heavy stuff but um, if you call it modern metal then you just uh, you're kind of free to to experiment a bit it's like a bit of an open genre and you can just go many directions from there and it can go heavier and it can go <sighs> yeah let's see okay and what are these songs about themes that are like overreaching for the whole album like self-realization freedom and you know rebellion against oppression that's the themes we have it's not as a as much a concept album but we have these themes on songs of subjects that we think are very important to us and that we also think that is important to everyone else and we want you know people to make these songs as their own you know in that sense and Mm -hmm. you know more about what people can feel when they hear it rather than what we have put into it but we have these themes because it helps us also you know to express ourselves artistically you know and have these strong emotions that we portray yeah like some of the lyrics can be a bit personal and then some of it is like Maybe we don't even remember what it was about anymore. And that's where the audience comes in and can have like their opinion that this feels like that to me. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, definitely like about overcoming the inner struggles and, and uh, breaking free and uh, reach towards your dreams and so on. Yeah, because that's how it's been also for us cover version of Lambretta's Bimbo was, uh, well, unexpected. Uh, what drew you to this track? And, uh, well, I just realized today that the Lambretta album came out in 2001, which was quite shocking. It was suggested to us by our management, actually. They thought that, hey, you guys should do this because this would fit you so well. And, f- yeah, funnily enough, it really does. And, you know, there are similarities between Arctis and Lambretta, definitely. So... I think it's really nice that we we did it because uh, it's a song that I grew up also with that was played a lot in the radio around, or at least you know on Radio Extremo from Ule there was uh, they were playing this song a lot then. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's nice, and I, I, I've listened to the songs through the years. And uh, Mika, the drummer, didn't really like the song from the start, you know, but he it, it grew on him. So he won't hate his time in on tour. He will enjoy it, playing it still. Yeah. It was a bit of a random song to cover. I mean, you can cover any song in the world, but it's just like you just go with one and then you have a few connections to it. To it and yeah, it just becomes this fun thing to do. But yeah, it's it's cool also. It's another Nordic band and band and uh, it was a big hit and something we grew up with. So why not? You already mentioned kind of the challenges of the pandemic and then having to kind of wait and you know sit on the material. But uh, through these challenges, how do you see like you were able to overcome them as a band? We just were very stubborn something that I think is very unique to the Finnish people, that we are very, mm-hmm. very stubborn and we don't give up. <laughs> that's, that's I would would would, would say, is probably the biggest biggest advantage, you know, being too stupid to quit, you know. Yeah. Be, just writing songs, do the same thing and bashing your head against the wall until the wall breaks. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I definitely feel so much better these days when we're actually moving forward with this. Uh, it's like it's so much more work and stressful, but it's it's good at all. Before it was like so much like anxiety and bad emotions, but I mean, you just pressed on because you can't just give up. If, if that's what you see your future to be like, you can't just quit. Said, no. You mentioned uh, you are now signed to Napalm Records. Uh, how did that happen and how did that kind of uh, change or affect your direction as a band? It didn't really affect the direction in that sense because we had all the materials were done already prior to the signing. But the signing, the we went label shopping last spring, I think, or something like that. And then we had some offers on the table, and then we settled with Napalm and signed with them. And yeah, it it wasn't a deal broken by our management in that sense because our management has had other artists signed to Napalm as well, and it felt like a good fit. Yeah, I mean, definitely a, a bit of contacts there. Uh, not too random and and as we delivered like a full package of already like made stuff it was the visuals and and the music videos and the whole album and everything it was like here's a full package do you like it do you want to make something out of this do you see potential and that's kind of how we how we got them also You already mentioned that you started working on the second album already uh, somehow in the pandemic. But uh, looking beyond the release of the debut album and, you know, tour with Apocalyptica, where do you see artists heading in the next few years? There's going to be a lot more shows, definitely. More tours and uh, more new music. We're going to be try to be really fast now because we have so much material, so we want to really clear the bank so to say you know so we can fill it with fresh stuff <laughs> you know it's it's yeah, nice it's to awesome. have these have these old songs that you've written because they're really good songs but it's also fun to do something really fresh you know something that you came up with some some short time ago that's also fun so we're gonna be really <laughs> efficient now you know and i think we're gonna grow fast i really hope we do because that's gonna be Nice to do some gigs abroad, you know, and bring art this out to the world. Yeah, I mean, we waited for so many years, so now it's just fast pace and all in, so we can eventually not have any old songs in the bank anymore. We just get to, like, uh, throw out all the fresh ideas we have. And, and yeah, it's going to happen a lot. Uh, and, yeah. Eventually, this has to go big, <laughs> at least so we can do it for life and make a living from it. Like, no, yeah. Touching that kind of, uh, like, what are your long-term aspirations? So, what would be your like dreams for Arctis? I would love to see Arctis doing big arena shows all around the world with which these with these really big immersive shows. So you get this such a great experience you know and a great connection with the audience and you know so making sure that their spent money is you know well spent you know so they really mm. get a good show for their hard-earned cash that's that's important for me so i would really like to see these special shows and i we want artists to be like like um uh, like a I have to say audiovisual uh, kind of experience, like you're stepping into the world of artists, not just hearing the music. You're actually like getting a bit of everything, and like having having some cool stage um, like show with visuals and and stuff happening around us would be so cool to get to that point and 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 not just be a band playing on the stage, but a little bit of eyes around us or something <laughs> that would be really cool it seems the visuals are also important to you how do you see like the visuals intertwining with the music like how uh, does the inspiration come from the same place or how do you 
how do you see those two intertwining? It's a bit, a bit about being in the middle of of uh, light and dark. Like we have metal and pot, and we have the inspiration from nature and versus the technological and digital world and everything, and uh, and also like Finnish summer and winter. That's also like light and darkness. So we're always like somewhere in the middle there and trying to combine this both uh, musically and visually and that's just uh, a really nice place to be because there's so much ideas and inspiration from both this contrast that contrast is is like our red line really to like bring both of the things together and um, yeah you can go f- to so many directions from from this middle, but we're all always trying to stay there, and not get uh, too much from this side or this side. The middle is is the golden thing, and there we have both both visuals and and music that has the same inspiration, so to say. Mm-hmm.